message that the Holy Spirit instructed me to um, share. You know, it was born out of um, my fellowship and meditation. And then the Holy Spirit um, began to speak to me inst instructively on this. So that's why I I'm making this video. Um, it's, a, it's a very interesting subject. And I think it will, if the church will listen to this video, then we will uh, be building a great church for Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, so basically, it's a, a, a very, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a subject on um, the title of the, the message I'm trying to share. It's building according to pattern. Building according to pattern. Um, you know, um, interestingly, um, one of the most um, disheartening thing that a man can receive is to label and label so hard and then get to the end and discover that he had done the wrong thing. I think it's very disheartening. I think it's very um, painful and, and, and tough um, to us personally, right? Um, so that's why the Holy Spirit, because we were having a fellowship and I was praying and then I was talking. And then the Lord began to impress it on my spirit, impress it on the spirit. I was even thinking, I said, okay, let me yeah, create out some time to properly do some research as concerning the subject. The Holy Spirit says, just go and talk and say all the things that I've told you to say. So I just put up some points from our conversation just to keep me reminded uh, of the points. And then uh, we're doing this video. I, I just wanted to open your heart to, to hear what God has to say to us. I think this is a... A seasonal message this is a message that is necessary for the church today right if we will build properly and not be disappointed at the end of, of the time at, at the end of the day it is important that we give attention to what the Spirit of God wants to say Father, I thank you I give you praise I bless your holy name you instructed me to talk on this subject and here I'm doing that instruction I pray that every ear that we hear this message will understand from your spirit. In the name of Jesus, you will speak to my vocal cord. And then um, everyone that will find this message anywhere, the Holy Spirit will have a hold on them and will make even more, um, more explanation, make it clearer to them in their spirit, right? That we, that we will be building according to pattern. And we will not be disappointed at the end of time. Thank you, blessed Father, for in Jesus' mighty name, amen. So that's the subject, building according to pattern. And then um, I want to just share with just some few scriptures and then say everything that he tells me to say um, to you. Hallelujah. The first um, thing I want to read to you, which I think will be of great importance, will be um, Hebrews chapter number 8. Hebrews chapter number 8 from verse number uh, 5, Hebrews chapter number 8 from verse number 5, right? I want to pay attention to um, um, what, what I'll be reading, okay? Uh, okay, from verse number 5, who says, who served unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of God, which he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, see he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. Notice this. It says that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. Right? That begins to explain to us that God desires that we always do things according to pattern. Right? Not the way we want to do them, but the way he wants us to do them. So he says that you do it according to pattern, but I should be in the mount. In the mount. Okay? So... The same thing, if, we, if you study through scriptures, we saw that when God called Noah to make the ark, he gave him a, a prescription. He told him how exactly the ark should be done. Okay, there's even another story that uh, um, wasn't too really nice, right, when you read it about the story of the ark, when the ark was brought in, and then the ark was trying to follow the car. Um, one young man just wanted to help. He wanted to help. He really wanted to help, right, to pick that ark. And then well, by the time he tried to to get the, to hold the heart from falling, he was killed for doing that, right? Look here, he had a good intention, but he was not 
functioning according to instruction because the Bible did, says that he sh nobody should touch the ark. It was not a, it was not in the class of those who could touch the ark. Okay, and then he was killed doing the right thing, so, supposed right in his sight, but because it's not according to pattern, he was killed. Right. So here we, we see very clearly in the New Testament. Well, let's read it down to see how it relates in the New Testament. Verse number six. But now had he ordained a more excellent ministry. I like the word he. He said, now had he ordained a more excellent ministry. In other words, we now have a more excellent ministry as concerning the former things that were shown. Amen. By how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. Glory to God. Hallelujah. For if that first covenant had made faultless, if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. Very interesting point. It says, for if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for a second. So in other words, if the first covenant was perfect, um, 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 God would not have a need to bring a second one. So it tells us that the first covenant had some challenges in it. That's what scriptures is showing us, not my words. Amen. Eight, for finding fault with them he established for finding fault with them he said behold the day cometh said the lord when i will make a new covenant with the house of israel and with the house of judah glory to god verse number nine not according to the covenant that i made with thy father fathers in the days when i took them by the by by thy hand to lead them out of the land of egypt because they continued not in my covenant and regarded them regarded them not, said the Lord. Verse number 10. For this is the covenant that I will make in the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord. I will put my law in their mind. Glory to God. He said, I will put my law in their mind and write them in their heart. And I will I will be to them a God, and they will be to and they will and they shall. They shall be to me a people. Glory to God. So it says, a new covenant, a new covenant um, will I establish with them. That's what it said here. It says, in that he will do the following. It says, I will put my law in their mind. So, you know, the first one he wrote it um, in a stone. But now he says, he's going to put the law in his, in their mind. And then it says, and, and then write them in their heart. Glory to God. That's number 11. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother. Say it, know the Lord. For all shall know me from the least to the greatest. Glory to God. That's very powerful. He says, for, say, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. He says, no man is going to be teaching anybody to say, hey, know the Lord. Right? Uh, but he says, they are going to all know me. So in other words, you're not going to be telling someone, uh, do this, don't do that, do that, don't do this. No. Well, all you're going to be doing in the new covenant, which we are now, because scripture talks to us about in 2 Corinthians chapter number 3, it says we, we are... Able ministers of the New Testament. So according to uh, uh, the New Testament, we know the Lord, but we are just being guided in the directions of the Lord. So nobody's going to be telling you, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, don't do that. According to how it works with the Old Testament, because now he had put the law in our heart. So nobody's going to be telling you because you have it in your heart. So you can do what's in your heart. As long as you look inwards, you're going to find him. Glory to God. Very interesting structure. But from where we started in verse number five, he said, God showed them a certain pattern to build. And then he says, now, but that was the former covenant that had fought he says but with the new covenant that that uh, it's faultless which is the new testament right that we stand in now he says that uh, 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 he is going to drop a new covenant with us where he had dropped that in our heart now the question is the question is uh not just any heart the heart that have been that are, that, that, that that has been immersed into Christ, the heart that had given his life to Christ. Second Corinthians chapter number five, verse number 16, uh, 17. If any man be in Christ, is a new creation creature. If any man be in Christ, the old King James says is a new creature. If any man be in Christ, okay. If you if you are born again, you're a new creature. You have changed. So that new guy has the law in his heart. So, but he needs to work according to the law, uh, the instructions of God in his heart because he was born into the word. Look at it. In John chapter number one, it says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the word was God. The word was God. So God's word is God. And then it says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among 
among us. Who was the word that became flesh? It was Jesus. So Jesus is the word. So when we get born again, we are born into the word. We are born into Jesus. That's how this instruction here is fulfilled. So when we are born into Jesus, Jesus now lives in us. Glory to God. So Jesus now lives in us. And the Jesus that lives in us is the word of God as well that lives in us. And then in, in Hebrews, the Bible says, Hebrews chapter number 12, verse number 2, it says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith, that from a, a Greek word that says, looking away and fixing your gaze on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. So in other words, now we, we need to look unto Jesus for us to, to manifest Jesus. We got to look on for us to manifest, okay? In 2 Corinthians chapter number 3, verse number 18, we saw scriptures where it began to say, as we look into the perfect law of liberty, we are changed. As we look in, we are changed to what we see in the mirror, okay? So what's, what's what we see? Jesus. And how do we look? Some will say, oh, God, I want to look up there to see. No, we, we've seen from scripture now that we look inward. Greater is he that is in us. First John chapter number 4, verse number 4. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the word. What's in us? Jesus is in us. So we look inward because Christ is inward. And when we look inward for Christ, we see the word of God. And once we see the word of God and we look more on the word of God, we begin to manifest the word that we see in words. Glory to God. But you see, uh, that's just an introduction to where we're driving up. Now today, how do we become better Christians because we see a lot of doctrines we see a lot of things going on flying out there and we don't know exactly which is correct right God gave us one Bible and so many of us have formed several religion out of that one Bible that's unfair right because Jesus said I wish that you guys be perfect even as I am my father is perfect right so so uh, that's so unfair because I, I'm thinking how we could make different doctrines out of one Bible it, 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 it should be one one doctrine it should be in one denomination sorry we we'll make different denomination different doctrines out of one bible right that tells me that somehow somebody is missing something or someone is going is taking it too too much out of place or not driving that accordingly or adding sentiment or using flesh whatever it is or the perception is wrong so that's why you see before the scriptures were when jesus was talking to them he says go around and tell them repent for the kingdom of god is at hand and repent from the great greek is metatonio which means uh, uh, uh change your thinking right format your brain format your mind that you might be able to accept the word of god the way it is right second corinthians 5 right uh, 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 17 says uh, 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 if any man be in christ is a new creature a new creature Though the the, the, the the new King James uses, uses the word cre creation, but from the Greek it was actually creature. Because when you get born into Christ, you're a new creature, you're a new specie, specie right? You, you you never existed before, you have you have just started existing, right? I, I did a video earlier on and I was talking to you about what, how our past is Christ because we were born into Christ, so we had no past, we were never existing before. The one who lived before died, that's why you were born again, right? If, if, if that one did not die, you would not have been born born again, you would have been transformed. But you say, oh, Pastor Preston, if you say that one die, how come that we still remember all the things that we're doing uh, before now? Yeah, because your soul did not die. If your soul dies, dies that, that's death, okay? It was your spirit that died, okay? The former spirit was taken off, and the new spirit, Zoe, now comes in. So, your soul did not go off, did not die. So, but you now need the word. You need the word to, to transform this new soul that you carry, that this new soul begin to behave according to specification, which is the word of God, because you are created by the word, and you ought to manifest as the word. So this new this new guy here now needs to manifest needs to manifest as the word. So, but that will come by training. How you begin to program yourself, program your mindset, right? Uh, 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 pick all the pick all what the word says and use it to edit yourself to vet the things that you do. If anything goes against the word, you say no, this is not me. But I'm gonna do what the word says because that's what the word is saying. Okay. So very key thing that I want you to pay attention to. But you see, in all of all of this that we're saying, how? Do we know that we are on the right track or we are on the wrong track? Because we see so many things today. You know, in John chapter number, in John, sorry, the scripture says grace and truth came by Jesus. But unfortunately, we see a lot of people who took grace and tru truth away, right? Because the truth is, truth is grace and grace is truth. The grace of God is truth. It says grace and truth came and grace and truth is Jesus. Who was grace and truth that came is Jesus. Okay. And, and then some people now took grace and, and truth faith away. They, they, they say, oh, there's no need for faith, but you forgot. Then if, in Ephesians chapter number two, verse number eight, he says uh, that we will become saved by grace through faith. We have become saved by grace 
through faith. Soteria by grace, right? By charis, through pistis. So you need to understand how this goes. You, 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 you can't, you can't, if you take something out of context, you'll make a mess of it up, right? And if you take something too, too much, right? You, you take it to an extreme, then you're going to be making a mess of yourself. We need to put things in context that we will get things right okay look at in romans chapter number six verse number one when paul spoke so much about grace right in the previous verse in verse number five right they were so confused and they said hey paul do we continue in saying that grace may abound paul replied them in verse number six and uh, one right he says he says uh, how, how shall you that are dead to sin no firstly he started by saying god forbid glory to god so in other words grace is not a ground for sin or for mess up no, it's not. It's power above sin. He just shows us that God has done something great for us. And it's a gift of God. According to Ephesians, it tells us it's a gift. So we just take that gift and walk according to the gift. Glory to God. So it says, God forbid. How shall you that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Right? Previously to, to, to this time, we were not dead to sins. Our sins were covered. Even in Psalm 51, you saw when, 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 when uh, David was praying, he says, wipe me uh, uh, clean with ibsos that, 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 that I might be clean. Right? So he was talking because at that time, that their sins were covered. But in the New Testament, our sins are not covered. It was washed away completely. So we're dead to sin. We're no longer active and alive to sin. That's why when you try to do something wrong, you feel bad. Because it is not your nature to do wrong, right? And if you do wrong, it does not make you wrong. So you're not a sinner because you committed sin. You're a sinner because you have the nature of sin. But if you sin, that, that's what the Bible says, if, if a man sin, right? He didn't say when he sins. Okay, if you read it in First John, it says if a man sin and not when he sins. Because we don't sin. But if we sin, right? So you see that then it talks about the advocate that takes care of all that. Glory to God. Jesus said, go into the world and preach the gospel to all the nations. A lot have gone out into the world to preach. But the question is, what is the gospel they're spreading? Is it the gospel according to Christ or the gospel according to the sentiments, traditions, or what the people want to hear? The truth must be told. Hear the truth and all clarification unveiled in this classic sermon by Pastor Preston Udero. Come on ground. So there are many who are perverting the gospel of Christ. They're changing it. They're twisting it. You know, for the fact that someone says, Jesus does not make, make the fact that he might be walking through a demonic spirit. What's the common ground? What's the common ground? How can we know who is wrong? And how can we know who is right? When we have the spirit of God in us, we should be able to tell between a lie and the truth. So it tells me that there are many carnal people handling this truth. Oh yeah, oh you see, the Lord has called me, someone said, the Lord has called me to preach deliverance. I am, I'm just doing, I'm, I'm a deliverance minister. There is no Bible portion that supports that it's error. I'm a righteousness preacher, error. I'm a grace preacher, error. I'm a uh, uh, error. But should we preach grace? Yeah. Righteousness? Yeah. And some all together, the gospel of the kingdom. So say I'm a kingdom preacher. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come. Now here he hits it directly. Straight up. He says, and this gospel of the kingdom, and this gospel, not another gospel. The one gospel have, been sent, uh, have we been sent to preach? The gospel of the kingdom. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That is the kingdom of God. What is our common ground? What is our standard? The Holy Scripture. We must believe what he says. So, so why am I driving on here? I wanted to see this clearly. That grace, right, it's not a, a, a grant for a mess up. It's just some 
kind of ability to live in what has been done for us, the finished work of Christ. Glory to God. So you see that so many things are flying out. If you don't take them in context, if you don't take them by the leading of the Holy Ghost, how the Holy Ghost is throwing light on it, the devil can use it against you and mess things up. Let me say this. Very interesting point. When Jesus came, Jesus, was, was, Jesus came to this world to reclaim everybody, right? It was to save everybody. And then when he fasted 30 days and 39, 40 days and 49, sorry. And then when it was done, Bible says, and it was led up by the Holy Ghost to be tempted by the devil. And then he, he got there. One of the things that Satan said to him was this. Take note of this. He says, Satan, he says, Jesus, bow down before me and I'll give you everything. I started thinking, he actually came for everything. He came for everything to reclaim the world. But now Satan is trying to give him in a wrong way. And Jesus refused. I'm thinking if, if, you, if it was you, you say, after all, that's why I came. So if I'm getting in the platter of good, why don't I just grab it? Instead of the old rigorous process, the painful process of the cross and all that. There is a specification. You must subject yourself and go through the specification if you must get the proper reward, reward for your work. You don't need to go through a, 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 a shortcut. I like to use this as a shortcut, which we call it short. Instead of taking through a shortcut, pray to be straining that you go to the right cut because shortcut, we call it short. Jesus refused used to fall from that temptation of the devil and chose to go through the right cast. And if you read it in Philippians chapter number 2, the Bible says, taught it not robbery to equate himself equal with the Father, because he was equal with the Father. But he says, endured the cross, why? For the, for the uh, uh, glory that was set ahead of the cross. So he had to endure the process. You must learn to endure the process and not try to create another process or look for a way out in your own way and then mess everything up. Because the truth is, when we're done here, we're going to stand on the judgment seat to be judged. And we will know if we've done it wrong or if we've done it right. But you see, it will be so bad to stand there and begin to regret. Because you will not have an opportunity to come back and correct the mess. Right? So you need to get it right from here. Get it right from here. So by the time you get there, you will not be disappointed uh, about what you're going to find there. So it's better for you to get to, to regret right now if you're listening to this video. And put things straight uh, and then make it up truth uh, rightly to that place. And then never allow the devil to deceive you with his temporal words. It's vanity. No matter what you gain here, how long are you going to live? 70, 80, 90, 20, 120. It's a short time as compared to eternity. So you cannot, you cannot trade eternity for this earth because this earth is a short time. Listen, let nobody fool you. It's a short time. You know, and, and then eternity is forever and ever. So you must be cautious to stay within the provisions and allowances of, of the, the grace of God or the right cause that you get it right and not feel disappointed at, 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 at the end of time. Okay, so let me show you one scripture, very interesting scripture, and one scripture a lot of pastors don't like to preach, but I want to show you very quickly. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And that's Matthew chapter number 7, and we'll start reading from verse number 13. Glory to God. Very interesting. Matthew 7, Matthew 7 from verse number 13. Very interesting scripture. And I, and I want you to, to follow me on that and pay attention to uh, what we're going to be seeing on that scripture. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I believe you're getting blessed already. Amen. So look at from verse number 13. It says, Enter ye in at the straight gate. For for wide is the gate and broad is the way that lead, lead to destruction. Wide is the gate, look at it, wide is the gate and broad is the way, a way where you're not controlled by anybody, you do anything you like. Someone says, if you, if you like it, just do it. No, you don't need to do everything that you like, right? In First Corinthians chapter number uh, 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 5, right? I think from verse number 12, it says to us that the love of God constrains us. He constrains us, even though we've been made into liberty, but the love of God by the Spirit makes us constrain in a certain kind of stuff. So you don't need to do everything that you feel like. You don't need to take everything that you, you know, because nowadays sometimes we can't even differentiate between a Christian and an an unbeliever because everybody seem to behave the same way. Everybody seem to look the same way. But 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 in those days, they saw Christians and they said, wow, this guy looks like Jesus. And it says, Christians, Christ-like, because they look like Jesus in Antioch. But now, we can't even tell. Now, I'm not trying to talk to you about oh, the way you dress and all that, because the Bible never spoke, spoke about all that uh, trait as a character. When the Bible talked about be, ye, be ye, uh, an example of a believer, he wasn't talking to us to be an example of a believer by dressing and all that. It, it, there were some character traits that he showed us that, that shows that we're an example for believer so it says broad 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 is the way broad is the way right broad is the way it says for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to what destruction and many 
Many they be which go go in their hearts. Glory to God. So he says there are a lot of people who are going in that direction already. Wow. And we got to rescue them. Yeah. We got to rescue them. 14. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way. So the way is narrow. It's narrow. Why is it narrow? We, we are not just allowed into everything that we like. We are guided by the Spirit of God. No wonder it says, as men that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the source of God. When we become Christians, we start taking instruction from the Holy Ghost and follow every direction He leads us in the allowances of the Word of God. Not outside the Word of God, but within the Word of God. Glory to God. So it says, narrow. Narrow is the way which leadeth into life and few Few there be that find it glory. He says, you know, a lot of people want to choose not to be disciplined because uh, it, it's a, it's a, uh, it, it's, it doesn't seem to be really nice. There, there, there's some form of discipline here by the will of the Spirit, right? So he says, narrow is the way which lead into life, and few there be that find it. Fifteen, beware of false prophet which come to you in sheep clothing. But inwardly, they are revening wolf. Wow. This is strong. The first he wants you is, beware of false prophet. And then he said to you that they're not just going to appear as false prophet. You think that, oh, they're going to just appear as false prophet? No. Oh, but pastor, we got the, the ones that are just so obvious. They're the ones that are not smart. And, and the ones that really are not even out to do real massive damage. The ones who are really out there to do massive damage have been trained by the devil. Some, some don't even know. But Satan is using them in his strategy. He says, they are going to come to you in sheep clothing. In sheep clothing. Look at it. In sheep clothing. But inwardly, they will. They are what? A revenant wolf. And then for some, you say, well, thank God it's a prophet. Uh, well, I'm not a prophet. Oh, my pastor is not a prophet. It's not only prophet. He also talks about teachers. Let me just show you that very quickly so you can see that as well. In 2 Peter chapter number Second Peter chapter number 2, verse number 1, he said that very also nice. Right here, he put his clear. Peter was speaking about the same subject. He says, but there were false prophets among the people, even as there shall be false teachers so you see the word first teachers here and let me show you this first teachers are even harder to notice than first prophet okay because because they, they're gonna just uh, wind this stuff and then you're gonna look it's gonna look so nice in your ear and say wow that's gl glory because they're using scriptures to to support their point does not mean it's gonna be right because all the time that satan came to tempt jesus he used scriptures he didn't walk out of scriptures he used scriptures to tempt jesus so you got to be careful amen so he says and first teachers among you who privately shall bring in damn, damn, damnable heresy, even, even denying the Lord that brought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Okay, let's come back to where we are. Here he was showing us false prophet. 16, he says, ye shall know them by their fruit. Now he says, you shall know them by their fruit. Do men gather grapes, grapes of thorn, or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. Now, when he talks about the fruit here, I want you to, to pay attention to this. He says, by their fruit. So, in other words, what they, are, what they are giving back to, we will know if they are true or they are right. What do I mean? I'm going to tell you. These ones who have come in the name of the Lord, supposedly, the people they are raising, their congregation, their members, their children, are they going to look like Jesus or are they going to look like the Word? If they don't look like Jesus, that whoever has raised them had not raised them well. Hmm. By their fruit. What's their fruit? Their offspring. That's what I was dealing here. Their offspring. Think about it. Right? Their offspring. It says, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. 18. So in other words, they go to church, give their offering, pay their tithe, sow seeds. They go home the same way. There's not a difference. There's not a, there's not, they are not a carrier of Christ. But they can talk all the biblical stuff. They could speak all the Bible English. They're professionals with the, with the word of God. They could say, God bless you, I love you, and all this stuff. But inwardly to outwardly, they are still the same. 
That means there have not been a transformation. God is not in interested in us just in imputing information, but God wants transformation in the life of the people. Christianity is transforming life and not just imputing knowledge, right? So it's not just growing in knowledge, but getting better with Christ. Okay, let's go on. Very interesting. 18. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can, can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not good bringeth not forth good uh, fruit is ender and cast in a fire. 20. Wherefore, by the fruit ye shall know them. I like this. It says, by their fruit ye shall know them. Now, that's just a physical way. Even in this last time, they're going to be more tougher. So John said to us, he says, test our spirit. Okay, glory to God. So he shows us another way to check which is more accurate um, more more better but still in the line of this it says test all spirit okay hallelujah glory to god so 21 it says not everyone that said now this is my emphasis 21 into 22 because every time i read the scriptures it breaks me down and it causes me to pray to think and start praying for people and praying for myself right initially but now i pray a lot for people because uh uh, uh it, it, this is so painful right look at 21 let's look at 21 not everyone that said unto me lord lord shall enter into, into the kingdom of heaven. So painful. Not everyone that said unto him, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Take note of what Jesus said here. He says, he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Jesus said something. He said, I go about doing my Father's business. Doing my father's business, working in his will. And then even Peter, Paul, sorry, why praying for them? He told them, he spoke about the will as well, that they will come into the knowledge of the will of God for their life. The will of God, which is not different from the word of God, because the word of God is the will of God. But not just the general word of God, but even though the logos of God is the will of God, we also need to travel in the logos of God to know specifically some of the things and how it works. By the spirit and not just in flesh. Glory to God. Think about this.
Where my trust is sweet our Father, let me work upon the world, whatever you will call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith with me made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Hallelujah. So, so think about it. This is not everyone that calls Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Not everyone. Wow. It says, but he that doeth the will of the Father. So the will of the Father is very important. You must, you must pay attention to the will of the Father, not just what has been delivered to you or told you or what, 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 what you think or what you feel or how you want to interpret the scripture. But it must be the will of the Father. The will of the Father. Look at the next verse. Very interesting. Wow. It says, many will say, it, say to me in that day, may this not be your portion in Jesus' name. It says, many will say to me in that day, Lord, will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Notice, it didn't say they prophesied in the name of the devil. He said they prophesied in his name. Wow. They prophesied in his name. Not in the name of the devil. So in other words, it was God's power they used. It was God's power they used. This is very striking. I want you to pay attention to this. Have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. So some had prophesied in his name. Some had cast out devils in his name. In his name. And in thy name done many wonderful work. So in God's name. That means these ones are not even obviously working for the devil. They, 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 were even, they even thought they were working for God. That's why this is very tough that you pay attention here. They've done it in his name. In his name, they've done it. In his name. In his name. Not another name. In God's name, they've done it. Wow. Wow. So, but look, 23. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Wow. They did it in his name. And he was going to say to them, he never knew them. That's so painful. That's so painful. That's just the truth. They did it in his name. But he says, I never knew you. Because they worked out of specification. Out of the prescription. Out of the order. They worked out of the order. But you say, but why was God still allowing them to, to, to do those manifestations in his name? Because the gift of God are without repentance. If he gives it to you, he gives it to you. If you pay the price, you own it, you earn it. And if you earn it, you just use it. Look, there's something I always tell people. I said, there's one, one scripture that gives me cross thought all the time. It says there are verses of honor and verses of dishonor. But they are both verses. They are both verses. Verses of honor, verses of dishonor. The one of honor is going to really receive honor on that day. But the one of dishonor is going to be ashamed on that day. But they are both verses. Vessels of wood, vessels of clay, vessels of uh, 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 gold, vessels of silver. They're, so, but they're all vessels. So in other words, God wants to use everybody that wants to do a good thing. God wants to use everybody that wants to do great stuff for the people. But you see, on the day of reward, he's not going up. Reward everybody because you did good stuff. No, he says, he's going to reward you for working according to specification because you've done the will of the Father. There is a will of the Father. Wow. This is key. This is great key. Think about it. For example, some people will choose to do everything to, 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 to do everything to make money, but just lazy in soul winning. You know, a lot of people are waiting for souls to come meet them, that they preach to them. They don't want to go to souls. But scripture never told us that souls are going to come to us. Jesus walked to the woman by the wayside. She never walked to Jesus. Jesus was so full with the anointing. It was Jesus who walked to the woman by the wayside. So in other words, we go to meet the people and take Jesus to the people. They're not going to come to us. We're going to pray for them. You know, if, if people will be praying for souls more than they are praying for their need, we will have more people in the kingdom of, 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 of God than remaining in the world today. But people are so, so craving and praying, praying so hard, praying so hard for their needs, their needs that has a deadline, that has an expiring date, that need that no matter what you get, it, it can stay with you for eternity. But that one soul you win, the Bible says, the heaven rejoices over a soul. 
then it's converted. So I say that one soul is more expensive or it's more valuable than a million dollar reward for work. It's more valuable. Think about it. But you want to work so hard. You want to work so hard. You, you want to go to church and then you're timing the pastor to be true. But you go to work, you're not timing because you want to work and make my money. And all this stuff you're going to do will end with this word. Vanity or vanity, Solomon called them. Listen, I'm not trying to talk to you, not a word. No. I'm not trying to say, uh, don't live a comfortable life. No. God is not against that comfort. God wants us to be comfortable. But you see, we must create a balance. We must put our mind on the things that truly matters to God. Colossians uh, 3 says, set your mind on the things above where Christ is seated. Because this earth is a temporal place. We must work according to the will of the Father. We must choose to do things the way God wants us to do it. Not the way we choose to do them. Not the way we like to do them. But the way the Father wants us to do it. If we don't want to be disappointed on, the long, on that day, we must work, in the, work the way the Father wants us to work. This is key. This is key. And that's why I came to you to, 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 to bring you this message. That's what the Holy Spirit was pressing in my spirit. He, he wouldn't allow me, let me go. He says, son, make the video. I, I was done with office hours. I was about to go home. He says, no, don't go. Make this video if you love Jesus. I said, yes, sir. And then I had to bring all the crews together. I says, let's put this video together because the world needs to hear this. So a lot of people will not be working or so will not be getting excited and saying, oh, the pews are filled and more people are in heaven and not knowing that it's just the pews that are filled and the kingdom is not filled. They are so filled the, the, there are a lot of people in the church space 10,000 see that 15,000 uh, 5,000 3,000 as the case may be but so many don't know God so many are not working the righteousness of God because the truth is if we have more people that know God and love God the world would have been a better place how you know the one who carries God you will find an expression of love they won't be cheating anybody they won't be lying to anybody they, they, you know, they, they won't mess anybody up and they'll be walking in the righteousness of God hallelujah think about it Working in the will of God. Working in the will of God. It says in 23, And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. 24, Therefore, whosoever, shall, whosoever heareth this saying of mine. So if you will hear what I'm talking to you right now. Hear the saying of mine and do it them. I will liken him unto a wise man. I will liken him unto a wise man. No wonder the Bible says in Proverbs chapter number 11 verse 30. He says, he that winneth a soul is wise. He that winneth a soul is wise. I will liken him unto a wise man. If you hear the saying and do the work. If, and do the work. Uh, James chapter number 1 verse number 25. He says, do the work. Do the work of the word. There's a walk of the word. Do what you're hearing now. Make an adjustment today. Right? Because Jesus loves you. And I love you. That's why we're bringing this message. Make an adjustment from where you're missing things. If you've been laboring, you know but the scripture talks about people who are laboring for their stomach. Right? If you've been laboring for your stomach, you got to be careful. You can use your head and fix your, your stomach infrastructure right. You got to trust God for your stomach while you deliver the truth the way it is. Don't use gimmicks on the people. Don't try to uh, uh, fall on the gimmicks or try to want to leave for, for need. You know, I'm trying to think. I go everywhere. I'm seeing flyers, stickers everywhere. And all that they put as a team on that flyer is God responding to one need of the other and this just blocks my brain because i'm thinking what did the scripture say in second peter it says all things that we that we ever need need is provided all that we all that that we that, all that pertains to life and godliness have been freely given to us that's what second peter chapter number one verse number three says it says all that pertains to life and godliness three into four has been given to us if all has been given to us why do we keep making our, our programs to, to keep asking the people to want to come grab some stuff from god the reason is because you have not given them jesus if you give them jesus they know how to get what they need but right because you, you've taken jesus away from them and keep them to be dependent on you all the time and then they keep being dependent on you for one solution to, for one help for one stuff and they are not growing jesus is not happy and he's telling me to tell you today because he didn't come and die for the word he didn't die for the word to raise a, a, a weekly ceases no he, he died for the words to raise armies those who are going to manifest his glory and and, and then live rightly and then transcend to the other space in eternity and live forever. That's the people he died for. And that's why Paul said in Corinthians chapter number uh, uh, 5, right? He says, we've been called into the ministry of reconciliation, reconciling many unto Christ, into the, into the love of God, bringing them to be in the will of God for their life. We, in the will of God for their life. Not the will of us or the will of this word, but the will of God for their life. Hallelujah. Very key. Very key. I want you to think about it today. What does an average Christian know out there? 
What do they even see Christianity to be? Christianity is not a religion. It's a relationship. It's the life of God in humanity. It's divinity expressed in humanity. Right? God came to save us that we might become gods here. Think about it. Think about it. Who are we raising? It says by their fruit you shall know them. How, who are we raising? How are we raising people who love God? How are we raising people who are working the righteousness of God? You got to think about it. So you don't do a great work, labor so hard, and be disappointed on the last day. So we got to build according to pattern. We got to build according to pattern. Build according to pattern. There's a, there's a laden order. There's an instruction in scriptures. Let us look at the disciples, how they have lived their life. If that's how we're living our life today, let us see their operations, their operations, what they understood as ministry, how they did ministry. Is it the same way we're doing ministry today? You know, I said a question one time in the pastor's meeting. I asked them. I said, if we were in those times, we're preaching the Bible, they're going to cut your leg for doing it. They, they were persecuting them so hard. I said, how many people would be happy to be ministers today? Everybody kept short. Because that's the truth. That's the truth. Ministry today seems like a way of an escape route from poverty or from, from some, some kind of stuff. Many are not coming in now because they love God. So your message to attracting them in has been a wrong message. You are either preaching hell, condemnation, or you are trying to, to, to sweeten some stuff too much and confuse them. Listen here. Let us go back to how things were done. Let us go back. You see, let us go back. Think about it. Let us go back to how things were done or expected to be done originally. Glory to God. We were made by him and for him. You better think about that. We were created, right? Jesus said it. He said, I, 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 I says, all things were made by me and for me. For me. So we're first for him before every other thing. You must think about it. Very important. We're made by him and for him. Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek you first, 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 not last, first, not last. You got to check that closely. You got to seek him first and not last. Think about it. It's first and not last. But what do we have today? We're putting God on the side. You know, God is some, someone we need when we got problem. And when everything is fine, we forget him and we're just enjoying our life. And then when we got another problem, we remember God. Or we remember God in the morning or in the evening. We want to pray. We want to sleep. Or all that. We just remember God. because, Or we're remembering God when they say, hey, God is going to come so help And you're just so scared. The Bible says, the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. So it's going to shock you. you you're going to be shocked. You, you're not going to know. The Bible says someone's going to be marrying when it's going to happen. Right? But for those who are sober... Who are in the will of God, it will not take them like a surprise because we will we will be prepared waiting for him. So you gotta be you gotta be careful what, what you do, right? You gotta be careful. Enjoy your life. Yes, enjoy your life, but enjoy within the provision of the of the word of God by the Spirit of God. Let the Holy Ghost lead you. Listen to the Holy Spirit that has been given to you. Right? It was far from them in those days. Right? But, but now it's, it lives inside of us. The Holy Ghost that lives inside of us is not just living for nothing. You got to talk to Him all the time. You got to listen to Him. Take His instruction because the Bible says as many that are led by the Spirit of God they are the sons of God. Think about it. So get on the business of soul winning today. No matter what you do, no matter what you do. No matter who you are. Get on the business. Win souls. Put, put money in for the gospel. The scripture says, let him the store still no more. Let him work that he might have to give. So give for the work of God. Hallelujah. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing a, a lot of video going viral where people are trying to say, don't give to the church anymore. Because uh, here, uh, 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 the, the, the pastors are spending extravagantly and all that and all that. Listen, for the fact that the pastors are spending extravagantly does not mean that you shouldn't give to the church. Right? They might, people, people who choose to give my attention to self, empires, and not the kingdom of God have lost focus. They have, they have had a lost focus. They are drifted or they are backslidden or they are being led, manipulated by, by the devil. Okay, But for the fact that the wrong things are done does not mean the right thing is not still going on. Give for the gospel. You know, say, oh yeah, we're not going to give a 110. All right, uh, the scripture never said, scripture never said uh, we should give 110 according to the New Testament. You're right, you're right. He never said we should give 110. He actually said we should give more than 110. Uh, so I'm trying to think which is bigger now. You're really right. He never says give 110, but because you're going to read it. Acts chapter number 4, right from verse number 34. Check what he told them. He says, the one, those who had land, sold their land. Those who have houses, sold their houses. They brought everything and laid it on the, the, the apostles' feet. So if you're preaching 110, I'm going to see how you're going to talk about 100% now because this is 100%. Because those who work in the love of God, 110 is too small for God. This last day where 
People are sponsoring immorality. There's a show going on now where they're going to give 45 million for some stupid nonsense they're going to be doing in one house. And then nobody is sponsoring gospel stuff. You got to put your money in and put it on the place where there's a right structure, where they love God, they truly love God, and they're going to invest it for so winning business. We're going to take money to print flyers, print Bibles, right? So we can send it to some places. We're going to take money to take transportation, take plane, to take the gospel somewhere. We're going to take money to even populate this put this what we're doing on tv put it on on, on, on facebook uh, uh, sponsors sponsorship and all of all this stuff it, it will take huge money to do it so if anybody who tells you not a gift to the gospel they are trying to curse you they are trying to rob you of spiritual blessing i am not trying to say you give to the gospel and not attend to the poor that's not what i'm talking about you also attend to the poor right you get a gift to the poor around you every poor that you find a spirit of leadership give to the poor but don't forget that the gospel needs resources to travel. Jesus spent many. People gave. They were partners unto Jesus. They were partners into poor ministry. Partners into Peter's ministry. Uh, you know, everywhere. So, let nobody tell you, stop you from doing it. Because it is part, it's, it's in the provision of the word of God. It's not outside the provision. But the only thing you've got to do is, don't give your money to thieves. I'm not saying give your money and go and ask them what they're going to be doing because, yeah, you're not in that, posi in that position to do that. But let the Holy Ghost prompt you and let no man manipulate you into it. Let the Holy Ghost prompt you so we can give for gospel work. We're going to preach the gospel. We're going to sponsor the gospel. We're going to choke people with the gospel. I'm thinking, you go in an, in an hotel room, we should be able to see free Bibles there, free devotionals there, right? You go on the plane, we should be able to see all this kind of stuff that somebody got to uh, 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 sponsor it if we will have them work in that manner. Glory to God. So, you got to preach the gospel. Then the next one is, what gospel do you preach? The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Spirit of God be with you all. It's, a, it's, the, the, it's the love gospel. Glory to God. In the love gospel comes the grace and truth. It's the love gospel. Grace, right? The, the, the love of God. Grace that came through Christ, right? Amen, somebody. And then the fellowship of the Spirit. So you got to bring people, make them learn to fellowship with the Holy Ghost and understand the grace of God and walk in the righteousness of God. Right? Righteousness is a gift. 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, verse number 21. Grace is a gift. Uh, Ephesians chapter number 2, verse number 8. You got to understand all the scriptures. Right? It's a gift from Jesus and we're going to appreciate God for it. But we're going to walk it with, with, with faith for us to enjoy what grace has brought. What grace has brought, we got to walk it with faith to enjoy it. Right? Faith does not compare God to respond towards us. Faith positions us in the word that we receive what God has given to us free. First Thessalonians chapter number 5 from verse number 1. But of the time and of the season, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. Next verse. For yourself know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Uh, the, the coming of the Lord like a thief in the night is not for us. But you're going to see what is the, but it says it comes like a Thief in the night. That means when you least expect. That tells me that around that time, a lot of people are going to get too involved with so many busy activities or kind of activities that they will not be conscious. Okay. But ye brethren are not in darkness. Pay attention. It says ye are not in darkness. That the day should overtake you as a thief. So that means for us who are not walking in darkness, it should not be like a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. So who will that thing overtake like a thief in the night? Those who work in darkness or those who are the children of darkness. There's a difference between those who are the children of darkness and those who work in darkness the child of God who works against the word of God is working in darkness and the children of darkness are the children of the devil that means unbelievers it says let us put on the breastplate let us put on the breastplate of what faith and what and love that means faith and love helps to protect us from attacks hear this today sometimes if you're just falling sick Anyhow, you just fall sick anyhow. Sometimes you get to check your check your love level. When you're full of hatred, you fall sick quick. Oh, make it not ashamed. For the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost. But if that love is not shed abroad by, by, in your heart in the Holy Ghost, hope we make ashamed. 
So don't pick one out and just be excited. Put the two together. You must commit in soul winning. You must also commit in sharing the love of God. You must express the love. Bible says, Bible says when we express love towards one another, that's how we'll be known for being the disciple of God. It's so interesting. It is the one we manifest power. It is when we express the love of God. A lot of people think that when you manifest power, that's how you're going to be known. Say this is the disciple of God. That's not true. This is when you manifest the love of God. Okay. And then we must commit in that process. Make preaching the gospel and loving Jesus an everyday thing. Create time for God every day. No matter how busy you are, create it. You can create it. You got your life. The, your job is not going to take all your time. Make it intentional. Write it down, put a reminder for it, and make sure you keep that fellowship on. Right, and everywhere you're going, when you're trekking on, put a message on your ears, put a worship song, and just be glorifying God. And you see anybody, you meet anybody, preach to them. And even if you don't meet anybody, and the Holy Ghost is telling you, talk to someone, go meet them, and share the love of God to them. Commit into a system, because if you win souls, you're not going to just leave them in the earth, because something's going to happen to them when you leave them. The Bible says, in Hebrews chapter number 3, verse number 13, he says, uh, 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 exhort your, your, yourself while it is called today. Exhort yourself while it is called today. So in other words, those guys need exhortation every day. And not just you alone, because you, you can't do the job uh, only. You, we need a, a diversity of different class of people within a system that is trusted. So that's why you commit them into a church. You commit them into a church where uh, they can be trained by the Spirit, right, led rightly, and taught the Word of God so they can grow to also begin to win all the souls and then manifest the glory of God in this earth. Because the whole creation awaits the manifestation of the sons of God. So we all ought to manifest as sons and also lead many to Christ and also got a great reward on the day when he appears. So we are we, we need to commit them into a system, a robust system, and support the gospel with our, with our resources. All right, do everything that we can. Talk to people, pray for people, pray for souls. I tell you, I said, soul winning is more praying driven than just talking. Right? You, you don't you don't cajole people to be born again because if you cajole them to be born again, they, they, they might not be a root by the spirit and they could walk away. So you must pray people to to be convinced by the spirit. You must pray people to be planted in the work of God. Go to God. Understand where you stand, right? Paul, uh, Paul plants Apollo, Apollo's waters, right? They, they, knew, they knew what where the, the, the best can fit in, but they're doing something for the love of Jesus. Amen. So this is very key. This is very key. I'm calling you today. Be careful. Watch what you do, right? The Bible says, let us be prayerful and sober in this last day, right? Let's be prayerful and sober. Let's not be driven by materialism, right? We, we look, look here. The Bible says you can't serve God and serve mammon. And today it looks like everybody's been driven by mammon. That's why all the programs are doing, including those who, are, who ought to be leading people are still driven by mammon and that's why everything that they do today they are they're doing all the stuff in mammon's name god is going to give you this come receive this come get this all the problems da, 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 this, da, da, da. they say no amount of stuff in the flyers nobody's saying return back to his love nobody's saying oh let's come worship god let's come celebrate jesus nobody's saying so winning campaign nobody's saying all this stuff even in the world for the year you see a manner of stuff right oh prosperity increased prosperity big big prosperity uh, come receive big big prosperity uh money is coming this year of bank full of money all manner of stuff including churches today we're gonna we're getting a number of funny names of churches today it's not driven towards love anymore it's driven towards lust right and you're hearing a number of stuff Jehovah Chaf Shab God that will provide everything God will give you money money all this stuff and all that I'm not saying God will not give us all these things, but we don't worship it. We don't have, allow the lordship of that stuff. We are we're committed to his love and we work within his love. And then working in his love, right, keeps us safe. Uh, and working in his love is working in the will of God. Not that I didn't say working in any love, but working in his love. In his love. His love is his word. He says, if you love me, you keep my word. Right? When you love me, you keep my word. So if you love Jesus, you're going to stay by his word. Interestingly, when you begin to walk by the spirit of God, when you begin to walk by the spirit of God, you don't, you don't try to keep the word of God. You just find yourself doing the word of God because it will come from inside out. It's not in, in the Old Testament, it was outside in. In the New Testament, it is inside out. That's where we started from when we're reading so just this one last scripture i want us to look at so we don't make this video too long um, revelation chapter number two i'll start reading from verse number two i know thy work and thy labor and thy patience and how thou cast not bear them which are evil and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and had found them liars three and had born and had patience oh boy had born and had patience for my name's sake had labored and had not fainted for nevertheless, wow, nevertheless, I have somewhat against you. Whoa, whoa, this is so, this is so bad. He says, I have somewhat against you. 
feeling emotional right now. I have someone against you because thou had left thy first love. So with all this stuff you've been doing, there's no first love in here. That means this is a very serious thing. Very serious. Five. Remember therefore from whence thou had fallen and repent. So if you're hearing me today, if you started well and then you've drifted, right? Go back to where you started, where you met Jesus. It's not too late. It will only be late when life is taken off you. And repent. And do the first work, or else I will come on of thee quickly, and I will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Think about it. Return back to his love. If you truly love God, you must walk in his love. You must be in his will, the will of the Father. He's the one that created all things. In, oh, I said that was the last scripture, but I just saw another scripture popping up in my brain. Revela uh, sorry, Romans chapter number 1, from 18 hours to the end. One scripture around that uh, region said that we should not serve his creation, but serve the creator. You must choose the creator above the creations. You must choose the creator above the creations, because the creations will pass away, but the creator will not. One day we're going to meet him again. The world is going to end. And we're going to stand with Jesus. And we're going to give account of our life. I have spent this life that he gave us. The life that you breathe is not yours. Papa says you were bought with a price. So you got to live for the one who bought you. Who paid for you. Jesus suffered. He could have chosen not to die for you. Right? He could have chosen. But because he loved the Father, he stayed. He, he couldn't turn his back on the job. He, because he loved the Father. What will you keep doing because you love the Father? Right? Will you keep, keep loving people? Will you keep ex ex extending the love of God to many? Will you stand up to the truth? Will you keep showing to Jesus that you truly care? Will you do what he has said by his spirit and not just by your senses? Will you get carried away by materialism or natural, naturalism? Or you choose to stay with Jesus. The word is coming to a close. And God said, I should bring this message to you. Here today and leave. Here today and not be disappointed on that day of judgment. Because this word is not going to be forever. There should be a rapture. There should be a taken away. There should be a tribulation. Right? Any minister of God who will not keep you in the word of God according to his will. Out of materialism. But a focus on eternity, helping you to know the Holy Spirit and work with the Holy Spirit to becoming an exploit for yourself, uh, be becoming uh, a manifestation of glory for yourself, is probably or most likely in errors or working in heresy or is fake. You got to be careful. Love God. Express that love for God. Stay in the provision of his love because he says, I got somewhat against you. I don't want him to have something against you. I don't want him to feel disappointed on the last day and say, I've done so much in your name and I'm disappointed. I, I, and, and then now you're saying, you know me not? Even though I did it in your name? Yeah, you did it in his name, but he says he knows you not. Be disciplined in his word. Be disciplined in the provisions of the spirit and stay in that system, that structure that God has placed you and be everything that has called you to be. I pray for you again. I pray for you again. That you will not miss the will of the Father. Holy Spirit. Everyone that, 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 that have heard this, listen to this sermon. They will understand your voice. And we stay with you. And yield completely to you. By the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. And let the sick hearing me now be healed. Because Jesus came. That they might be whole. Let them be healed. Anyone that needs a provision from you. Let them receive it tonight. Receive it right now in the name of Jesus. Let your power run through everyone that I've heard. The one that needs to return back to his love, be, 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 be driven from within to come back to his love. The ones that are sick, be healed. The ones that need provision from you, receive provision. The one that's confused right now, receive direction from God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Father. Thank you, everlasting King. For in Jesus' mighty name, amen. We love you and we'll stay in your cause forever. Right, Paul said, and I, I close with it. Amen. Paul said, if, I, if I'm out to please men, he says, I'm not a servant of God. But because I'm a servant of God, I speak God's truth 
to you all the time. I feel the anointing, I feel the power of God who will walk through this video in your life right now. God bless you. I'll see you again next time. Pastor Preston is my name.